I have been manager now of Rugby Town for a month and a half, and in that time, we've won one game. We've lost a lot, including our last two games, where we've conceded nine goals. So it might not come as much of a surprise to know that coming back for today's episode against the team in third away from home, I am a little apprehensive, but there is a silver lining. As of January 1st, we can sign some players, and I've already signed six, one of which is a familiar face in Tyler Forbes. Now, be warned, he's not going to be a starting striker for us, at least to start things. Who knows, he might become a mainstay of the first team, but the 21-year-old I had to bring back. I'm hoping that today with our new signings, we can finally turn around our fortunes. Let's see if we can make it happen. How is it going, folks? Welcome back to Rugby Town and welcome back to Park to Prem. It's episode number two. Appreciate the support on yesterday's video. It is a special weekend upload. I set a target yesterday of 3,000 likes, thinking that'll be hard to hit in 24 hours. You've done it in under three, so you really have mudded me. I I'm sat now recording the bonus episode. I say you've mudded me. I'm actually really excited to keep playing. I don't know if I would have been able to handle a weekend break. We're back at Rugby Town. I've signed players. Game's slightly less exciting, so we'll talk about those first, and then hopefully we're going to see ourselves win our first ever game live. Now, we have got a fairly spread out January, which I think could be to our benefit because I am looking to recruit a load of new players, mostly because of this run of games. Now, of course, last episode we took on Cambridge City, we had an next year 3.54, and I thought... That's not a good omen for our striking options. We might need to sign strikers. This run of upcoming games really reinforced that. The first of those games, we scored first in. Roger Lee, the Bermudan international at defensive mid, pulled the trigger from range, found the back of the net. I thought, maybe we're going to get an away win. It didn't happen. We were taking on corn, which is, incidentally, the place where vegetarian meat corn, if you've ever had it, is from. I believe it's named after this place. Uh, that's according to the YouTube comment section, which of course would never lie. Sadly, despite taking the lead in this game, we did not hold on to it. Bestwick scored in the 90th minute, which was frustrating in itself. And when you then look at the match stats and realise we had an XG of 1.7 to their 0.6, it becomes significantly more annoying. The one win we did get in this run of games was against Corby Town, a team from the north, a team that I believe are actually quite good. On this occasion, though, they weren't good enough. The goals came late on in the second half, Wilson with the first of them, and then from there, Wilson with another goal contribution. This time it was an assist, running down the right-hand side, putting it into Fielding. Fielding, I thought, was going to be our saviour. He got the goal here. He was a player who I bigged up last episode. Bad news, he's probably going to leave us on a free. Just as a little reminder, players at this level can have contracts or they can be on non-contracts where they're essentially paid by appearance. Tom Fielding, one such player who is paid per game that he plays. But as a result of that, he can leave whenever he wants. And there are a list of teams very, very interested in him. I've tried to convince him to stay by offering him a new deal. He wanted £200 a week. I wasn't going to pay him £200 a week on a full-time deal for six months, given the fact he's got four goals in the league so far. So, yeah, I've mentally prepared myself for the fact he will be going. So from the high of a win to this result against Sporting Calsa, uh, we lost 5-1. It was 4-0 at halftime. I will point at the XG and point out the fact it was a 1.99 to them to 1.68 to us and say we got unlucky. In fact, I'm going to throw Matt Hill under the bus. I'm going to blame Matt. I hope that's okay. This guy has five clean sheets in 20. He was so bad in that game against Sporting Calsa. I decided to drop him for the next game, which did mean up stepped Liebert Hines, who didn't do any better. We lost 4-1. I mean, he conceded one less goal, I guess. XG of 3.77, one goal again. I've signed a lot of strikers since last episode. Some would say in reaction to what's happened here, they'd probably be correct. Perhaps I should be more concerned about the goals conceded rather than goals scored, but I feel like at this level, you can just win through pure firepower. As a result of our recent form, we are now one point above the relegation zone, where Corby are that team. Uh, of course, we did beat them 2-0, so that's a silver lining. Just as a little reminder, I've promised the board a top half finish this year. Uh, there are only 16 games left of the season. Since with all that in mind, I've decided 
I do actually have to be proactive in the transfer market, getting rid of some deadwood, bringing in some new players too. Two players have left so far in January. The first, Joshua Thomas, 20-year-old player, not a very good centre-back, the kind of player who I feel like I can replace with someone better. And the other man I've let go is Rechi here. He is a 33-year-old player with a load of veteran experience, not a bad player by any means, but he can only play right back we don't play with right backs. So that's a little bit of an issue. He wanted to leave the club. He wasn't that happy. We've let him go on a free. So with those two departures, I decided to lower the scouting budget, then rejig the excess transfer budget from moving the wage budget into the wages. And with that, we have started to spend. So like I already mentioned, Tyler Forbes has joined the club. I do view him as more of a backup striking option. Ultimately, I want to get a starting 11 of players that are actually contracted to the club that I'm not going to potentially lose on a free. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm building a team around players like Tom Fielding, who I could lose at any moment. And so it's with that in mind, I introduce you to the five other players we've signed, all on more permanent deals. The first, Jovel Jackson Davis. This guy, formerly of Nottingham Forest Academy, has not been actively involved in football for a few years now. At 20 years old though, he is a phenomenal player for this level. Uh, 13 finishing, that's incredible. He can actually run, which is a big, big bonus. 12 acceleration, 12 natural fitness is great. 11 pace as well. Decent off the ball, decent composure. I feel like he's the template lower league striker that you need at this level. So he's quick and can hopefully find the back of the net. We've signed him on £85 a week for the next two and a half years. That is actually a monumental commitment for a club of our level, so I'm hoping he's gonna score goals. The other striker I've signed, and you might have noticed him here on the club profile screen, because he is listed as our key player, is Rio McEnvoy. This guy, formerly of Manchester United's academy, then went to Bolton, had a loan spell at Hyde. I tried to look into this guy a little bit. He played for Hyde three times. In the last of those games, he got sent off for violent conduct towards the official. I couldn't find any more detail other than that. I'm hoping he's gonna be a better behaved lad for us, he is a an interesting character. He's really, really, really well-rounded in a way that you don't necessarily want your striker to be well-rounded. But ultimately, for our level, I feel like he can pretty much play any striking role. And I'm hoping he's going to score some goals. I feel like between him and Jackson Davis, we've got two players here who are kind of little and large striker maybe it's going to work. I did want to add a little bit more depth in the defensive area when it comes to defenders who are signed permanently. Steve Bayeke is one such player, 21 years old, Cameroonian player, £25 a week we're paying him for the next two and a half years. I feel like for £25 a week, we've got ourselves a bargain. Was without a club last season, comes to us as a, a serviceable centre-back. I know it says here he is our sixth best centre-back, Star ratings are just complete lies at this level. And to demonstrate that, here is James Mace, our highest star rated player compared with Steve. Here is the head to head. I don't think there is a world of difference between these two players in all honesty. And yet apparently, if we look at the reports, Steve is two and a half stars. James is four and a half stars. Trust me, Steve's going to be good if he stays fit. He is marked as very injury prone. Now, if we just sort our players by wages, you'll notice here that Dan Summerfield is still at the club on £300 a week. And I know he's rated really high when it comes to his star ratings, but that £300 a week could easily extend to maybe four or five first team players. So I am trying to nudge him out the door. With that in mind, we needed to get in some fullbacks. And we've done that with our most recent addition in James Dutton. This guy is 20 years old, a really good left back. Now I know he's on £40 a week. I know he's He's two and a half star rated. I am now going to compare him with Summerfield. There's a star and a half difference between the players. If I now actually look at the attributes, it goes without saying, James, what he lacks physically, he more than makes up for in every other element of his game. His corner taking being 11 could be really, really useful for us. And I think he is actually just a better left back option on a fraction of the wages. And the final of the new signings we picked up is Wakaz Azam, who, I'll be honest, whenever I say his name, it sounds like I'm doing some kind of Harry Potter curse, I feel like. Wakaz Azam, I can't wait to shout it as he's running down the right hand side of the pitch for us. He is coming in to be our right wing back option. We've actually signed him on loan, so Zealand's going to be really happy. We're paying none of his wages. He's joined us from Cliff Row. Incidentally, they play at the same level as us. They're in their own relegation battle, but they've decided he's not worthy of playing for them. And I think at least in comparison to our other right back option in Luke English, Wakaza Zamhit can offer a little bit of competition. We're not paying him anything, just feels like a sensible signing. Now, you might be rightfully thinking, Jack, your form has been patchy as of late. What tactical rethink are you doing? <laughs> the answer is 
None. I, I'm not changing the tactic yet. I feel like with the new strikers we've got, and if we can create more, we will be fine. It does mean that for this first game, we are going to have Dutton at left back and Azam at right back, the two new wing back options. Jackson Davis and McEvoy are going to play alongside Fielding in this team. And at the back, you'll notice Biake is going to start. Like I mentioned, I do want to get to a situation where our entire starting 11 is on more permanent contracts. I think doing that this year is going to be difficult. And the reason it's going to be difficult is because if I look at players like James Mace here, 38 years old, good centre-back option. His physicals are dropping off a cliff. But if I go and negotiate a contract with him, he wants to be a star player. And if I just show you how much he wants, he wants £190 a week, which for us, I, I, it's just too much. It doesn't really represent value for money. I'm better off just keeping him on this kind of part-time deal. For this season, we're just going to have to accept that we are going to have players like James, hope that we're not going to lose them. And at the end of the season, they either lower their wage demands or we're able to find bargains like Steve out there who want to join us for £25 a week. Because ultimately, I think having players actually contracted is really good for stability in squad hierarchy. And on top of that, if the players aren't contracted, we can never sell anyone on. So, so with that all said and done, I'm now ready for this game against Warsaw Wood. They are in third. They are a good team. Today, we're going to do our first away day. We are heading to the BBG Stadium in Warsaw. It holds 3,000 fans. They were promoted last year. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Now, don't worry, rugby fans. We will be doing the rugby away day eventually. Just not today because we're heading to Warsaw. And of course, if you are a new viewer here, you might be sat thinking, what's going on? This isn't Football Manager. What's happening? Welcome to Away Days, where we go on Google Earth and find out where the hell we're playing. Speaking of which, I am not a Scooby-Doo where Warsaw is. But through the power of the internet, I can confirm we've not got far to go. Here is Warsaw, north of Birmingham. Now I just have to find the BBG Stadium. Now it has dawned on me, we're not actually playing Warsaw today. We're playing Warsaw Wood, which logically means there should be a football stadium near Warsaw Wood. Indeed there is. I don't know about anyone else. I feel like I'm back doing Park to Prem now. We're here. It's official. There's a car park. It's actually one of the best car parks I've seen in non-league. And also you can do your forklift training here. They've got a 3G pitch next door, a swimming club and adult social services and a gym all next to each other. That's quite the trio. Uh, there is a backup pitch over here. And then here is the stadium itself. Now the real question is, is there any street view footage of this stadium? Because there are no roads near it. Hold your breath. Yeah, I thought this might be a problem. Now, if you peer through here, we're on a, a distant road. I feel like I'm being a spy looking over the fence here. That is Warsaw Wood Stadium there in all its glory. Great graffiti on the outside. I, I can't even tell if the seats or anything. We can do the drive into the stadium car park, which we are going to be greeted with a KFC. I mean, that is... For a non-league club to have a KFC in the car park, that is phenomenal. And I believe if we just go down here, over there is the football stadium. This is a proper away day, innit? This, this is what we're all about. Frost on the grass, car park empty, no one's here. And here we are turning up at the door. And this is as close as we can get to the stadium where I can confirm... I think there are actually seats there. And I can confirm we are in the right place because the BBG Stadium is clearly the Boston Bailey Group Stadium. I feel like they've just lost points for the name. Now, I don't want to be overcritical. Some of the most poor floodlights I've ever seen at this level. Like, genuinely, I've done a lot of low lower league saves. These floodlights, disgraceful. Poxy. Not sufficient. I might be expecting too much for episode one. Is Warsaw in 3D on Google Maps? Is Warsaw in 3D? Oh, my, it's actually in 3D. Uh, I realise, not gone to the actual pitch there, because here is the stadium, which, I mean, look, it's not the flashiest of stadiums, but you know what? I can appreciate the tranquility of it. They've got some great facilities around the edge, and they've got a KFC in the entrance to what we have to say is one of the best non-league car parks we've seen in Park to Prem history. A little bit more going on in the stadium would have been nice, but... I'm, I'm more than happy to give this a solid 6.75 out of 10. I'm not sure if I've scored that too highly there based on the giddiness and excitement of being back for an away day. I'll let you guys be the judge at home. Okay, let's see if we can get a win on the board. We kind of need one. We've got five new additions in the starting 11 today. And of course, James Mace, the star man whose physicals are falling off a cliff, who was injured last episode, 38 years old. Maybe he's the man to bring in and fix our defence, which has conceded nine goals in the last two. I want to believe we're going to turn it around today. I'm expecting lots of goals. 
I feel like there's a jovial tone to everything I'm doing today. Maybe I should be more worried about the fact we're one spot above the drop, but given the XG in the games, given the chances we've created, I don't really feel worried yet. I, don't, I know it could be famous last words, couldn't it? Especially if they score immediately. Maybe, maybe I should be worrying. They've scored in a minute. Here I am boasting about signing six new players. Not signed a goalkeeper. Didn't sign the thing that was probably the most logical thing to go out and get. Monteiro. Very exotic name Monteiro for this level of football. Smashes in. I bet, I bet he, they've shipped to him from South America. I say that they haven't. He's, he's French. Although he, he might not be with them for very long because he's about to get stolen like all our players are. Welcome to non-league Warsaw Wood. I feel like I've had many regens called Monteiro. It's just a very read Jenny name. Never met a real person with that name. Don't think it's a real name. I mean, so far, there's not a great deal to be optimistic about, especially with Monteiro at the edge of the box again. He's played it through to Butlin. That shot ripples the side netting. I'm sat here thinking, do I want to change things tactically? I have, you might have noticed, fiddled with some of the midfielder roles. I'm going to go back to wing backs on support. Maybe that will help. Okay, we have a set piece. We have a set piece. Lee's going to put it in. Fitz Harris heads it. Wasn't even close. Why am I being shown that, football manager? Five minutes left of the half. We've not yet had a shot on target, so it's going great. And now it is half time, and I am actually starting to panic. We actually showed nothing in that half. Good news for us is they did slow down in the kind of second half of the first half, but ultimately, we were not good enough. Were Kazazam nervous? I'm going to cheer him up. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Have fun. How f he's still nervous that he does he's not clapping. Nervous on his debut. To be fair, Warsaw Wood is a big stage to make your appearance on. We drove into that car park. He saw the KFC. He was shaking. Maybe though he's gonna turn it around here as we have a chance. Fitz Harris, edge of box, lays it back to Francis Lee. Go what right. We're Kazazam. Here he is. I'll get your KFC if you get us an assist. Sadly, on that occasion, he's immediately lost the ball. They're now launching it for James Mace. Mate, you're 38 years old. Can you not see the football coming down out the air? They've scored. I'm fine. This man here, this man, he's been playing football for probably 20 years and he's just let the ball bounce past him there. And then Butlin sticks it away. No nonsense. It's 2 0. Some might call it reactionary. Fielding's leaving the club, isn't he? He's going to be pissing off soon. So you know what? Tyler Forbes, wait, I forgot to put Tyler Forbes on the bench. I've made an error. Okay, look, David, you're the, you're the man I believe in. Definitely wasn't looking for Tyler. You'll do. In these lower levels, they've changed the number of players you can now announce on the bench. And I should be used to it. I should be using that to my advantage. Apparently, I just forget to put the players I want to have on the bench on the bench. 20 minutes left. Uh, we've still not had a shot on target. And they're on the attack again. Don't do it to me, Warsaw Wood. It's free. It's free. I feel like I probably should be panicking more. I, hmm, maybe I should be signing more players in January. The worst thing about all of this is, this is the worst we've played all season. We've played really well in spells. We've created lots of chances. We've scored a goal. Jovel Jackson Davis, he's not played football in two years, but he still knows how to score. But yeah, just looping back to the previous point, this is the worst we've played so far this year. And that makes me sad because I thought with all the new additions, we'd do better. And it's just not happened so far. But you know what? There's 10 minutes left. It's only a two goal game. We could turn it around. Lee, free kick. Let's get another goal. Fitzharris is lurking. It's headed away. Can Fitzharris keep it alive? No, he shoots it at the defender. Oh my, what is you? What are we doing, lads? Lads, Azam, Kazam. What's happening? Pervs is through. I've called him Kazam there. I'm just making up nicknames for Wakazazam now. They've scored another. Get me out of here. It's got to the point where I'm referring to my right back as a Shaquille O'Neal movie, I've just realised. But maybe that's a good example of the state of my mind at the moment. We've been battered for one. Now, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Hill is bloody awful in goal. I need a goalkeeper. Let's look at the positives. Jackson Davis scored on his debut. That could be a sign of things to come. I hope. Oh. Oh, okay, uh, Tom Fielding has uh, left us. That uh, hit continue once after the game. That defeat, he'd had enough. He'd gone probably because I subbed him off at half time. He's joined Hendon. He's joined Hendon. Well, that's probably need another striker now, or rather maybe I just have to put Tyler Forbes onto the pitch. Tyler, it's your time to shine next game. Now to say I'm panicking at this point would be an understatement. We have got lots of new signings coming. I am looking at our upcoming games. Rushton and Diamonds are in 18th. We then have Harborough in 5th. The game that I'm going to come back for next episode, I think for a double header, is going to be Bedworth United and Coles Hill Town. Bedworth United are our fierce rivals. 
and I want to beat them. I know they're second and they're probably going to batter us. Just feels like something I have to come back for. I don't care about any other game. Don't care if we get relegated. If we win against Bedworth, I'd consider that a success. Whether or not we can do that, I'll be honest, at this point, I am starting to have my doubts. There's only 15 games left of the season. So reason for panic, but we're going to try and remain calm. There is still time to sign players. I love the fact he scored one goal and immediately Jackson Davis is now considered our key player. I feel like that's a pretty good summary of the state of play here at Rugby Town. Right, you know what? I'm going to go mentally clear my head. I've got a day of rest. We're back Monday. I hope you guys are excited for it and I hope you enjoyed this weekend video. As has been the case with all the other videos, the support has been absolutely mind-blowing and it has helped push the videos really far and wide. Let's keep that going. Drop a like on this one. Hopefully you're looking forward to the next video. Check out the series playlist down below if you're binging this somewhat in the distant future. And besides all of that, it's me, Jack, and I'll see you all on the next one. I'm out.